think this is what the science is telling us, that um, within this century, with the projected sea level rise, we will f find ourselves um, on uh, our islands which may not be able to support life anymore. Uh, if that was to happen, then of course you will find people trying to look for, for places to, to live. 35 years ago, Marshall Islands sent a delegation to the United Nations in New York uh, to petition the Security Council to uh, have the Trusteeship Council um, uh, uh, hear their appeal for independence. And in order to go to the Trusteeship Council, they had to get Security Council permission. 35 years later, none of them would have predicted that they would be back at the Security Council now talking about climate change. But to, be, to learn that, the cl that climate change is not considered the central business of the Security Council. So here's the Marshall Islands not asking for independence now, asking for help to survive. Mm. And Security Council not really understanding that that's an integral part of how we think about security going forward. And it was the most moving part of the, obviously, of the testimony. Now for Kiribati, this is something that's very, very painful and very emotional. Because um, we have this spiritual link to our land. And uh, we are proud people. We don't want to, to leave our islands and, and become refugees. Now, I just want to make it clear that our government reject the use of the label refugees in, in regard to uh, people of Kiribati uh, migrating um, as a result of climate change and sea level rise. Now, this is something that we are trying to avoid at any cost. But of course, we are realistic enough to to, to know that it's, it, it will be up to the international community to be able to help countries like mine to, to deal with these and to prevent such cat catastrophic uh, situations from happening. And so if we look at um, you know, extreme weather events where the, the costing has really been done to a very high standard, we know that the, the floods in Thailand uh, uh, a couple of years ago um, could be costed at $46 billion. That's 3% of Thailand's GDP. We know that the recent floods in Jakarta just in January, um, uh, that the car insurance claims totaled 500 million US dollars. Um, and so we also know over the past 30 years that um, humanitarian relief and assistance as a result of natural disasters has been about 30 trillion trillion dollars. That's, that's a third of all overseas development assistance. And so um, building resilience and being able to withstand these kinds of disasters, given that we know that they are going to happen on a more frequent <coughs> basis and a more intense basis, um, it becomes very important because it's going to be very hard for us to keep on affording to, um, to bail people out of this. We've got to find ways to build resilience into the system. Well, we've seen a warming globally of about 0.8 of a degree Celsius over the last 100 years. Um, and over the next 100 years, we're looking at a warming of between 2 and 4 degrees, in some cases up to 5 degrees. Uh, we're currently, unfortunately, tracking the high emission scenario, so that means it's more likely at this stage that we'll hit 4 degrees rather than 2 degrees. And that's why we need global action to reduce emissions. Uh, and I have to hope that you know we, we penetrated through a few more of the diplomatic brains that were, were in the room. But this is, you know, this is no longer something that's happening to somebody else over there in the future. This is happening now to people in the Pacific Islands, but now to people in coastal cities and in other parts of the world. And I think that. Uh, uh, you know, for, for, for very long in the sustainable development community, climate change has been sort of over there, somebody else's problem. It's now our problem, it's happening to us and it's happening now. We don't want to be a burden to any community that may be able to, to take on our people. So we want to migrate as contributing members of those communities. So this involves the, the training of our people to international standards so they can compete for jobs at uh, international labour markets. There are points of agreement. We all agree that we want clean air because we want our children to be able to breathe. We, we all want our children to have a healthy future, wherever, if they're living in the slum of Jakarta, or if they're living in Kiribati, or if they're living in New York City. So we have to find ways to describe what that future looks like because uh, four degrees is stoppable, um, but it means that we have to act now. Mm -hmm.